It was traces of blood and body fluid recovered from the McCann's apartment and the car they hired 25 days after Madeline disappeared that prompted the dramatic shift in this investigation which saw the McCann's named as our Guidos. Leaked reports about the DNA tests of these samples have been contradictory. For every report that says it is damning, another insists that it is inconclusive. In fact, the only official comment from the Portuguese police is that they don't expect the final DNA results to prove definitive. The McCanns claim that despite their many hours being questioned by the police, they too remain in the dark about the extent of the alleged evidence the police have uncovered. I would have thought that this DNA evidence mm -hmm. would have had to have been put to Kate and Jerry if when they were being questioned by the Policia Judiciaria. You would have thought so. I cannot discuss the interview process or anything that goes to the heart of the inquiry. Just for clarity, are you telling me that, they, that, that uh, the Kate and Jerry have not been informed of any uh, traces of DNA having been found in, in any in the car or in the... Apartment? I can't say that. That's a reasonable assumption for you to make. But how reliable is DNA evidence and how much is it likely to reveal? Primetime went to London to the lab that worked on the Kerry Babies case and the Linda Chamberlain Dingo Baby case to get some answers. Our DNA expert explained that forensic scientists look at about 20 individual genetic traits or markers in any one sample. But could the fact that DNA from Madeline's siblings was also in the car complicate matters? 15 or 16 markers would give you enough evidence to provide a strong pointer that it was more likely to be Madeline's than somebody unrelated to Madeline. And you should be able to, if you know what the types are of the close relatives, you should be able to distinguish Madeline's DNA from theirs, just from 15 or 16 markers. Some reports have suggested that the DNA test on the sample of body fluid found in the car proves that Madeline is dead. However, Dr. Sindercombe Court says DNA tests cannot determine this. It's not possible to say whether the DNA has come from a dead person or from a live person. If it is Madeline's DNA, could it have been transferred from items of clothing or toys that Madeline touched? It's not possible to say how it's got there. There are various reasons that it might have got there, either because it's been deposited there directly, because it's been in contact with Madeline's body or fluid directly from Madeline, that it might have come from a secondary source, uh, such as any item that Madeleine might have had a lot of contact with that is covered with lots of her DNA, lots of cells from her could have been transferred to anybody who touches that object, for example, and transferred onto another item. But it is unconfirmed reports that the DNA was discovered under the carpet in the boot of the car that have raised the most serious questions. The place where the DNA was found inside the car, it's not um, an excessive place. It's not a place where you can just throw a clothes and that's why they, they really think that they hide the body. While this has been widely reported, in fact the police have never confirmed where the DNA was actually found.